Cool. So, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Derek Parade. I'm a web developer. I do a lot of work with JavaScript. Hilarious uh, coincidence, or perhaps not, hat tip to the organizers, because I'm going to talk about a little bit of functional programming, although admittedly at a much lower level than what we heard from our previous presenter. Uh, it's kind of funny that the two tools that I like to use, D3, Angular, uh, D3 requires a lot of functional programming because a lot of what D3 is, uh, as the name implies, data-driven documents, is basically taking a bunch of data, manipulating that data into some JSON endpoint, and then using it in an interactive data visualization. So the goals for today are twofold. We want to talk about going from a CSV. So a lot of times I get hired by people who have got their data in an Excel document, which was my life. I spent my first many years out of university basically working in Excel. I, had, I knew nothing about JavaScript. I knew nothing about computer programming. What, what I knew was that I was wasting my time. <laughs> uh, what I knew was that there was a better way, and it just took meeting and talking to the right people for them to be like, have you ever heard of Ruby or like JavaScript or all this stuff? And now I've got a text file that's got about 300 mathematical related methods that I can just call from the command line, and I'd never go to Excel. Uh, unless my clients give me a file that they need visualized, in that case I'll use it. Uh, and interaction yields information. So from, from my purposes with Angular, um, I just knew that there was a couple of things that I needed out of the box that I didn't want to write myself that I could find on the internet. Angular provided that. And uh, in particular, it was Angular Bootstrap UI. So if any of the front-end developers in the room have ever used uh, Bootstrap and you've used Bootstrap UI, well, there's an Angularized version of that. And I'll show you a couple of code snippets which I think will blow your mind with just the utter and sheer simplicity uh, that, that Angular brings. Um, so I'm going to tell a quick story before I get into the demonstration. And this is why Angular and why D3. And there's a picture of a bear. And, uh, there's, a, there's a really good joke that I like to tell that I believe was a perfect analogy for why Angular and for why D3. So there's a group of hunters that are in the woods. And the hunters peer off into the distance and they see what looks like a pretty gnarly, like a fairly rabid looking bear. And so they all kind of panic and look at each other very quickly. And one guy whips off his pack and starts unlacing his boots. He pulls out a pair of running shoes from his pack and he puts them on his feet. And the, his buddy looks down at him and he goes, what are you doing, man? He's like, you can't outrun a bear. And he goes, yeah. He's like, but I can outrun you. <laughs> and I feel like that's angular. You know, everybody, you can say, well, there's a lot of problems with Angular. You, you can't outrun a bear, uh, but you can outrun the competition. And that's what Angular means to me, is that there's so many things that it brings that I just can't get elsewhere, and it does it so seamlessly and so easily that for somebody like me, who, as I mentioned, is fairly new to programming, it just works, right? So this talk uh, is not best practices. It's more like, check this out. Check out how cool Angular is and how you can use it today to, to build really cool stuff on the internet. So this is a visualization that I built for the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce. And what you see right now is a bunch of dots that are dancing around on the screen. And you're probably wondering, like, what the hell is this? Uh, so I wanted to build in some information on the side so that if, as you're watching the visualization, you could read what is income, what is GDP, you know, you want to learn a little bit more, here's some opportunities to do that. But I didn't want that to take over the entire visualization. I just wanted it to be a nice little sidebar. And this is all done with Angular. And then it occurred to me that you might want to do some other interesting things, like if you wanted to find a city, like Toronto, you would type in Toronto and hit enter, and you would just know where it is. You would be able to find it. But typing out the entire word is a real pain in the butt. So I just want to type out ham and hit enter, and I want to find out where Hamilton is. And you can see it's kind of buried down here, but that's okay. I can go and find it, and I can hover on it, and it gives me the information that I need. Now, the second or third bit of Angular, first being this menu box, uh, the second being this type ahead. Uh, the last little bit was the hint box. So like, if you don't know where Canadian cities are, you don't know, you can just bring up this list, you can click on Montreal, and then Montreal will animate, you can go ahead and you can check it out. So the last demo I'll show you is that you might be looking at this and you're still thinking like, okay, what's the, what's the value in all this? And 
You can't see it in the demo, so I encourage you all to check out the slides later on. Uh, but there's a, a year in the bottom left-hand corner, so I can stop this, and I can hover over the year, and I can go back and forth. So if, for example, you were like, Derek, what was up with Toronto in 2007? I would just go to 2007, and then I would go and find Toronto. And I'd be like, well, the GDP was 270 billion, and each person made roughly 34 grand. And you're like, well, what's going on way out here? I say, well, that's Calgary. And as you know, Calgary is benefiting from a massive oil boom, so the people in Calgary are relatively rich compared to us. You know, you're thinking like, oh, geez. Well, but at least you're not Abbotsford. Okay? So we can be thankful for that. So I built this visualization for a couple of reasons. Number one, I was tasked to display where, what's going on in Canada. You've got 30 years of economic data. You've got roughly 12,000 data points that I pulled from a spreadsheet and moved into JavaScript. And that took a little bit of work. Uh, so first of all, you have to wrangle the data. And you use a combination of D3 and a little bit of JavaScript for that. So first things first, right, we're going to set up our empty arrays. Guess what? We're going to push some stuff onto those arrays. Everybody who's done JavaScript knows what those things are going to do. Then we come down here and we use a really cool uh, library called QJS, which basically allows us to determine the order that we're going to load our particular files. And we have three distinct files that all hold data that we need. So we've got GDP, income, and employment. So that graphic, that visualization that you saw represented those three things. And this does all that. And then it says await. Well, what happens after await? We call some function. So now we're going to call this function. And you're going to look at some of the things that we do here. So we have two nested for loops. And if that looks unreadable and looks like a pain in the ass, you've probably done JavaScript before. Credit to our previous presenter who was thinking like, you know, there's functional programming is great, but is there a better way? And this is a great example of what I had to do that Angular could potentially abstract from you all this functional stuff that doesn't look very easy to work with or to deal with, you could find better ways to do that. But just for this example, we've got a function that makes a chart. We've got our cities. So our data all has on the top row a list of our cities. So we pull out those keys, and then we loop through the cities. There's 28 cities. There's 128 data points for GDP, we loop through those, and we create an object. So that's, that's really all we're trying to do here, is just create this object. We need the city, and we need the GDP. And then at the end of the day, we push that onto our GDP object, and we do this really cool underscore dot merge at the end, which is beautifully magical. So you're looking at this, and you're seeing two really cool pieces of functional magic. Up at the top, underscore dot zip. Now, for those of you who come from more of a SQL uh, relational type, this could be totally wrong, but my brain views underscore dot zip as a similar kind of relational orientation, where if you've got an array of cities, like ham, because I'm going to have many typos, tor, and king, and you have an array of GDP values, so because I'm super lazy, I'm going to just do this. You can do var. zipped equals underscore dot zip and then you just pass in cities comma GDP enter and then you call zipped and you've got this object so if I do console dot table which is a really sneaky way to get your outputs visualized that's it it's just like this really cool magic where you pump a whole bunch of stuff into underscore and you get this beautifully aligned kind of one-for-one -one data piece so I had 128 year, uh, year periods. I had 128 pieces of data for GDP, income, 
and I had to link them all together, and that was the easiest way to do it. Uh, so, the great uh, contrast between what we just heard is under, uh, dot merge is available to you in Lodash. It is not available to you in underscore. So, this is a Meteor app. Meteor does not ship with merge. So, if I do underscore dot merge and I pass it, oh, that's not an underscore my same two objects, you're going to see we get an error. But if I do underscore dot object, then we do actually get an output a little bit different than what we want. But just to kind of show you that they're hugely useful, but there is subtle differences between the two. And uh, learning those differences can, can go a long way and help you build your applications. Uh, so the end result, as I kind of showed in the console there, is that all we, what we were looking for is just this tidy object, <coughs> which has the city tag and my three data attributes, which I can pump into my visualization. The lesson. The lessons. Um, so the key here is to think in API terms, is that with a visualization, I knew what I wanted as an endpoint. My endpoint was an object. I hate to say it, like it wasn't easy. It took me a long time to figure it out. But now that I look back on it, if all I did was just start at the smallest possible point, if I just pulled out that array, okay, then I'll, now I'm working with an array that has a length of 128, and it's just one single object. That's really easy to handle. But because I'm, I'm pushing in so many different components into this data, it can get a little bit loopy. So start at the end point. Think of what is your application actually going to call. Build that data object, and then inject that data object into your kind of Goliath uh, data structure. Uh, Angular search boilerplate. So I touched on that. What I did with Angular is probably the most basic implementation of AngularJS that you can have. I did not reinvent the wheel. I didn't even integrate it into my D3 code. Some people use Angular. They create a directive to insert their D3 code. I encourage you to look online for some of those examples. Maybe, again, maybe I'm just a noob, but I think it's a lot of effort for uh, limited added benefit as far as my application was concerned. If you're using more real-time um, dynamic data inputs, then I can see that being a huge advantage to you. Um, but this is a static visualization using previous economic data. So there was no need in my particular case. So the beauty with Angular is a little bit of what we touched on previously is that all I do is I just pass in an array of strings which corresponds to all my cities, and then I wire up an ng repeat, and it's perfect. I get my little hint box. I don't have to trouble myself with all the markup or write JavaScript functions. It's just all in there for me, and Angular provides that, which is a beautiful thing. So the last two points to wrap up, uh, data from the inside out. So think of what are my endpoints, build those endpoints, and then construct those endpoints into your data object. Um, because I had all my data inside of these massive Excel spreadsheets, I tried to just move them all over into the application first. Big mistake. Start with the tiniest possible data endpoint and then build them up, build them into a single object. Um, last one is JavaScript for the win. So it's a big theme tonight. I'm not going to harp on it. Everybody who's here already knows that. But think of my bear joke uh, when it does come to mind is you look up your buddy and say, well, nope, but I can outrun you. Thanks.